Islam and greetings, Moors. Welcome back to another episode of Pardon the Interjection. I am your host, Supreme L. I would love to give honors to Prophet Mother Drew Ali and all the active Moors. Here on Pardon the Interjection, we dig up information to divulge to the people in the upliftment of fallen humanity. We have a special guest today that we'll be getting on the line very shortly. Islam and greetings, family. We have on the phone that good brother, Rami L. How we doing, good brother? All is well. All is well. Great. That's great. That's great. Well, um, I'm glad that you uh, <clears throat> finally got with you, brother. I've been trying to get with you for a minute. Um, we're just going to go right into it. Uh, 4th of July, 1776. The truth. What you have to say about it? Well, you know, in order to bring real uh, insight to uh, the truth, uh, significance to those who are classified as Negro, Black, and Colored, you know, as to um, 1776, 4th of July, and those years and dates around in that, um, we also need to give and make sure that we um, give the, the history to bring, it, to bring it forward up to that date. Right. When we look at, you know, 1776, and we look at the, the taking of the nationality of, of the Moors and right. the brand that was placed upon us. Right. In order for us to truly understand that, then we must also understand the fact that we were here and the complete context of what that means. Right. In most cases, we are always taught that we came on ships and that, you know, we were brought over here from Africa, you know, the slaves were brought from Africa, and that you had a, uh, a native population that were, you know, called Indians and so on and so forth. Right. Truly without you know, really understanding the, the, the lie of that, you can't even understand 17, you know, 76, uh, uh, all the way to 1779 and the events that, you know, took place. Mm-hmm. So... Before we go into exactly what took place in 1776, let's lay the foundation of what was actually going on here prior to that. Now, many, many of times we're taught that, you know, you have the, uh, the ships coming over the Yankee and so on and so forth, and that's going to be your foundation of when, you know, the so-called black Negroes uh, the Africans came here. But if you do your research right. and you look at uh, one scholar that I would uh, tell all the listeners to look into is uh, brother, excuse me, actually he's a European, mm-hmm. named David McRitchie. And you have the book Ancient and Modern Britain. Okay. Where, where he's going to break down, fairly break down without any code. Mm. Who are the indigenous peoples here, people here? Right. And he's going to also liken the and, and place the indigenous, indigenous people in the context of their familiarity um, with the rest of the world, and he's going to put it in the context of the identities of the people mm-hmm. that were similar or the same all around the world, right. and how it all ties in. Right. 
and he's going to bring it into focus that in, in most of your battles, there's going to be lots of different, um, you know, books that you can read. Mm -hmm. But in lots of your battles, the people here will call Moors. Right, okay. Now, there's also another book, and, and, and The Age of the Modern Britain is a book that's written in 1895, I believe. Okay. Now, you also have another book, <clears throat> that is going to bring context to why this is significant and it's called A Star in the West and it's by Elias Benino. A Star in the West, okay. Yes. Now, in A Star in the West, he, it, it, it's called a, a Star in the West, I think it's an honest attempt to, um, it, it goes into being an honest attempt to uncover the history of the so-called Indian theory so on and so forth. That book is written in 1835. Okay. And again, that's called A Star in the West by Elias Benino. Now, those who know know that Elias Benino was the second president um, of, uh, of the Confederacy. Okay. Now, in that book, he's going to go on to quote uh, other authors who would tell you that the Carthaginians and the Jews, now understanding the Jews is, is modern, it's really Hebrew, mm -hmm. were here and have, have whole, had only totally populated mm -hmm. the Americas prior to the European. Right, okay. Okay, he also gives the description of the indigenous people, the indigenous populations here, gives a breakdown of the um, of some of the tribes, meaning the different uh, titles and names of the tribes and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, <clears throat> again, it's important to lay that foundation because what took place in 1776 has to always again be kept in alignment with what was going on before. Okay. When Christopher Colon uh, was navigating Okay. They were navigating around the, the world. Right. Okay, so it wasn't like this was his first voyage. Right, right. And in 1492, um, this was the fall of the Moors in, in Europe. Okay. Okay. January the 2nd is disputed whether it's the 2nd or the 20th of 1492. Okay. And <clears throat> that was when the Moors lost the last stronghold, Granada. Okay. And so you had the discovery missions that you're going to find under your doctrine of discovery. Okay. And these missions started to take place to where they were going. They're going to make it sound simple and say to, you know, about colonizing and so on and so forth. Right. What they were needing to do is to go and take the world's riches to steal the gold. Right, right. And so they began to travel all around the world, okay, and seek to steal gold. Mm hmm To steal the wealth of different lands and so on and so forth. Right. Now, when they were, um, came to this land, and found the indigenous people here, you're going to read Cortez's diaries and his son's diaries. You're mm -hmm. going to read Cristobal uh, Colon's diary. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know that's who they call Cristobal Colon. Right, right. And he's, and he's going to give you a description of the people. Okay, now, when Cristobal Colon describes the people, he says that the people look like the people of the Canary Islands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. He references the Canary Islands. Right. If you couldn't tell the difference between these people uh, here. Remember, he uh, took down in Central America. Mm. Right, right. Okay. Never, he never set foot up into the North. Right, not yet. Now, when references the Canary Islands and that, that anyone who sees it, make sure you go back and you do your history on the Canary Islands. Okay. Because he's offered a reference point okay. as to who the indigenous people were. Right. So that you can connect the dots. Okay. So if you don't know what the people of Canary Islands look like, 
then you can't really follow along with his narrative of what the people look like. So you have to do a sidebar and say, well, what do the indigenous populations of the Canary Islands look like since the people that he sees were the same as the people of the Canary Islands? Right, okay. Now, Cortez uh, bumps into well, uh, the Aztecs and, and other civilizations. Mm -hmm. And there's also um, a contemporary book called When Rocks Cry Out. That's a, a great book for anyone to do some studying on uh, or studying in and so on and so forth. Uh, but a uh, whole um, Remember, drops a lot of jewels in there, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Yeah, and part, part of the interjection, part, part of the interjection. Now, you say, what, what was yeah. the last name? What was the name of that last one? When rocks cry out. When rocks cry out. Yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. And by Horace uh, Butler. Okay. Okay. Horace Butler. Mm -hmm. And so she actually takes. <clears throat> That's right. I read. I, I read about that. That that is true. And, and so, based on the timelines and the fact that they said they came from the east. Mm -hmm. Okay. They said that they came from where the sun rises. Mm. Okay. And, and so he draws those correlations. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. with understanding understanding those different things. We can begin to move forward into the significance of 1776. Okay. Now, when the when the European sons um, came to the Americas, as we all know, and you already know, um, the Moors and the the Albion have been fighting for thousands of years and we've been tracing all the way back to the Punic Wars and even prior to, to that. Right, right. And so with their explorations, first of all, we have been Europeans who have come here prior to uh, Christopher Cologne, so let's not let them fool you into thinking that first exploration um, by even European was with Christopher Cologne. Right, right. He, he was not the first. You can find, um, you know, find the history of that. You know, you just you take the time to search certain books, and they, they had different maps that were already in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, they had already been circulated all through Europe, and the European name is uh, slipping, but in the early, I think in 1410. Right, right. Uh, one of the Europeans had navigated here and actually had uh, used a a part of the mean map. Mm, okay. Okay. And part of me, okay. uh, part of me, that yeah. that you 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 ring a bell. You make you ring a bell, uh, in 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 my in my mind because uh, when you say that, I was just recently came across a movie 
by a Sydney party called the Long Ship, and it was the yeah. Vikings and us, the Moors, that were seeking a bell, and that was you know before Columbus or Columbia. So yeah, you 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 you, you right on, brother. You right on. Okay, mm-hmm. the Vikings were Moors, and it comes from the word Vik. Okay. V I T K I N G. Okay. Vikings becomes the word Vikings. Oh. The Vikings were Moors. Okay, okay. And, and so even when they show it to us, as you already know, you know, uh, being a scholar, that they're going to show it in partiality, even if they're going to show us doing something, they're going to show them as if they were there and a part of a major you know, contributor, so they're going to steal that part of the history. Um, but Europeans weren't really navigators. Right, right. That way. They true. were learning, you know, so the Vikings, and, I, and I'm saying this more um, for those who will follow, who follow your show and who will listen, but the Vikings were the Vikings. Okay, okay. V-I-C-K-I-N-G-S. It becomes the Vikings mm-hmm. later. Right, right, because they come, they come from us. We created them, so I mean, they're, they're mm-hmm. okay, right. So that do correlates and, and ties into that. So yeah, I definitely get mm-hmm. that, bro. Right on. Please continue. So yeah, so when they started to do their navigations here, mm-hmm. uh, they started to do their their, their missions and pillage the world of its gold and riches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, that landed them here. And once they got here, you had all type of indigenous societies, government, already set up here. Right. Right. Okay? They did not bring any government here. They were government less. Mm. Might have fact. We were the ones that they were running from when they left in the first place. We were the ones who were ruling Europe. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't okay. that the, the Danes? Oh, pardon me, pardon me. The, the Danes and the yes. Dogs. Is that is that is that have anything to do with it? The Danes and the Dogs. You said the Danes. Did you say the Danes? Did you get any yet? Yes, and the Dogs. Oh yeah, the Danes. Um, the Pikinettis. Um, the uh, gypsies, mm. um, dolls, um, let's see, I'm thinking of all the different uh, things, kinds that they may use. Mm-hmm. Um, but anytime we hear those, that's us, the original rulers of Albion. Mm. Okay, so, so you hear of New Albion mm-hmm. over there. The New Albion because where we took them mm. after the Hamburger experimentation. Okay. And New Albion was ruled by us. Okay. Europe, as you, as you already know, comes from Europa. Right, right. You know, so that whole area has a huge history um, dealing with us there. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, we built stone hands for them. Mm-hmm help them absorb some spiritual consciousness because they were a spirit soulless people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so part of the reason you're going to hear about the Moors going to different places and offering uh, different spiritual insights to them is because of the law of reciprocity and compensation for our acts against mm-hmm. nature and, and our hybrid experimentation that produced them. Right, right. Right. So we have to deal with the uh, compensatory laws and so on and so forth to right our own wrongs and change our karma. Now that's a different subject, but I'm just throwing it out there. Right, right. And, and I caught it. I catch it. I definitely catch it. Now, so when they get here, you have a business government, government already set up. Mm-hmm. You're going to hear about that, of course, when they talk about the Iroquois. Confederation, you're going to hear about the Lenny and Nappy, mm-hmm. uh, uh, mm-hmm. 
Clives, you know, the mm -hmm. uh, Washita's, the, Washita, uh, the yeah. Atlanta, mm -hmm. uh, the Mound Builders. All of these, these were governments mm -hmm. set up here. Now, one of the oldest trees, um, or one of the longest existing trees on this land, was actually between the Moorish tribes to stop warring with each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the, that's the, um, the great law of peace. Right. And that was signed because we were at war with it, each other, and in order to stop the killings and the slaughtering of each other, we formulated a law that would govern, govern all the different territories mm -hmm. in a peaceful manner. And mm -hmm. we set up a confederation, and you know, that, that goes on, of course, to be called what, what they call your five civilized tribes, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So this was all up and down. You have the U.T. UT that you want to see, which becomes Utah. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you have all these different um, governments that was already here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this was, of course, a part of the Moors Empire. Okay. And this was the Madrid al, al aqsa right. which means the Great Four West. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Morocco, the Four West. Mm -hmm. And so with that, we did not see, we did not see gold the way they did. Right. You will hear about... Um, it's just not not after the quarry, but um, Mensa Musa Musa Mensa Mensa Musa. Yes, pardon me, pardon me. Okay, okay, Mensa Musa. Yeah, you know, you would hear about him going into Egypta uh, or Egypt and giving away so much gold right. because it wasn't that we didn't see it that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, but they did. Again, and you have to keep it in the context that these are people who are searching for spiritual advancement and, and, and attainment because they have none. Right, right. And you're going to hear a lot of people uh, reference it for different reasons. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the search of a European is truly the search for a soul. Mm -hmm. They're searching for a soul, which is the reason why they will adapt any, any form of spirituality. They will adapt adopted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they've never produced any because they are not they don't have the capacity the spiritual capacity to establish a spiritual system mm -hmm. they don't have that spiritual capacity mm -hmm. so what they do is that they're searching for things that can bring it to them mm -hmm. understanding that gold in our ancient society was a spiritual thing mm -hmm. We were gold in order for us to be able to <clears throat> bring and absorb in the information from rock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What we call the sun, the sun. That's right. That's right. Okay, so you're going to see us rocking gold ornaments everywhere, all over us. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was no big deal. Right. Okay. Now, of course, the currency uh, of exchange at that point also at times was gold mm -hmm. and things like that. But it wasn't the same value that's placed on it today. Right. So anyway, with, with them, you know, navigating the traffic, to steal and plunge, plunge, um, plunge the riches of the world. Mm -hmm. So play here. The Moors are here. You have the, uh, indigenous government set up, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, and what they began to do, now before I say that, when we were here also, we need to understand that <clears throat> we had a system of enslavement here. Mm -hmm. Where we were enslaving each other. Mm -hmm. Now that's where we're going to hear and you're going to be able to research the Moorish Bonnevilles. The Moorish Bonnevilles. Bonnevilles. Okay, and those Moorish Bonnevilles become your European plantation. Mm. That's where you, pardon me, that's where you get the slave master and the slave owners. Yes. And how you always notice that 
in a lot of cases, they would always have um, a quote-unquote black person as the head of the plantation exactly. because those systems were just left exactly. in place. Exactly. This is about the overthrowing the Moorish Empire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. So, right, so we're enslaving each other all, all over. And this is part of the reason why you have to have the great law of peace is all the different things that uh, we were doing. So mm-hmm. we weren't really just pure people. And that's not what was going on. Mm-hmm. In fact, in fact, we were following spiritually, which is the reason why we were doing these things. Mm-hmm. And we were going through the Piscean Age, which represented being in pieces, shattered. Right, right. Is, and, and so with that, we were doing all types of acts against nature. Mm-hmm. And so we're following we we are we have fallen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're enslaving each other over here, uh, and then you hear these people, you know, uh, apologists, uh, people who don't want to, you know, face the reality of, you know, they'll say, well, we wasn't it wasn't as bad as the they did to us. We have no time for that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We have no time to try to lessen the severity of what we was doing and maximize the, the, the dollars and severity towards what they were doing to us. Wrong is wrong. Right, that's childish. Right, we, we have to get past that. Mm-hmm. You know, if we don't, we don't learn the lesson, we will repeat it. Right, right. It's that simple. Right. So, you have us over here, we have all different types of things going on. You had different shades, you had different hair textures, you had different phenotypes uh, here. All up under the Norse paradigm. Mm-hmm. All at the same time. The European comes in his search and his plunder. Now, you're going to hear part of what they talk about with the search and then plundering for the gold with Esther Benito. Mm. And, that, and that's a story that we should pay close attention to because this is one of the codes that they'll see. Okay. They'll tell you how Esther Benito come to navigate the ship. He was a medicine man. He spoke many languages. Well, okay, let's, let's, let's stop right there. How could he speak the language of indigenous people here? Right. Right. <laughs> right. Now, how could he understand him? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Ah, well, that's because the dialects over here was, was part of Arabic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And other indigenous languages that were spoken all over the world. It was, it was, it was, partially Arabic and, you know, a bunch of other tongues um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that were right, spoken. Right. So he was able to come into uh, our different tribes and so on and so forth and communicate. Mm-hmm. Well, Hector Danico was able to get us to show him where the gold was. Mm. Now, once we showed him where the gold was, he then goes back and tries to bring the European to take the gold. Mm, mm, mm. And then so we killed him mm. for being a traitor mm-hmm. to his own people who was not going to be here. Mm-hmm. Because he wanted to, he was uh, helping them tour, tour, tucking down the coast and so on and so forth mm-hmm. to steal our gold. So we had taken him to what they were label as Gold City or the gold cavern, or the gold cave. They've never seen it. Mm-hmm. So they'll label it, because they still, to this day, never seen it. Oh. Because when Esther Benico tried to bring them back, we killed Esther Benico. Right, right, right. And, and then sent, you know, sent them on their way and, and, and slaughtered some of them also for trying to come and kill it. Right, okay, okay. So, that's just one of the many codes that they're going to see about what was really going on here. Mm-hmm. So, with all this stuff going on here, you had the, um, us start to try to formulate to stop all this killing that was going on. Right. So you have a lot of tumultuous activities and so on and so forth is going on here. Well, Fast forward into 1776 because a lot of this, that we, you know, we just went over set the foundation to what was going on in your 13, 14, 15, to 1600, um, really starting around here in your 1600s and um, late 1500s and so on and so forth. Concrete, all right, concrete. So, 
at 1776, you have a meeting of what's called the Odd Fellows. Mm, okay. And that took place in Pennsylvania. And in that meeting, um, at, I don't remember the name of the, uh, the building in a second, but at that meeting is where the Moors were stripped of their nationality. Mm hmm. And this was the process, the process of overthrowing. Okay, this is the process of overthrowing the Moorish Empire and removing us, and, 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 and removing us from our heritage. Mm -hmm. Which you hear uh, uh, referred to as the accepting process. Mm -hmm. the process of the, the uh, interrupting the line of the city. Right, that's cheating, that's cheating. Right. That's right. That's that's when the Moors were classified as Negro, Black, and Colored. Mm -hmm. Okay. And by, by classifying us that, as that, it put us in a mode of being less than human, and we took on the caste system of the India. Caste. The caste, that's right. Which, become, which means that we become a part of a servant class or mm -hmm. caste. Mm -hmm. An act, an actor. I said actors, and I cast yeah. actors. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when that took place, me and you started seeing them start trying to overthrow the rest of the the territories here. Mm, right, right. Now, now remember, even at this point. In 1776, most of this land was not a part of the 13th Colony. Right, right. That's right. So, there was indigenous tribes all up and down. Mm hmm So, from that point on, on, or forward, you're going to start seeing them really branch out and trying to take the territory. Right, right. You're going to start to see them move into... Um, well, shortly afterwards, uh, you're going to start seeing them moving to California. Right, okay, right. And that's right. going to be called the, Cal the Gold Rush. Right, right. Go, go, go west, young man. Yes, yes, and, yes. And, and, and the, uh, the, the, you, you hit a point, pardon me, you, you hit a point, especially with that, uh, the 13 colonies and the, the this remind me of the 3630 parallel. Mm hmm. Mm. But you, you really, you really dropping something. And now, now, I know we have we have like a, a couple minutes left. Uh, we can come back for a second half, or we can go ahead and here and end it in the next uh, five minutes or so, and uh, come back on another show on another day. Uh, but I want I want you to get give me this um, George Washington and the significance of him turning the estates into dropping the E and having states and calling it districts. Can you break that down okay. for me? Yes. So the, the word estate, okay, is going to, is going to deal with your heredimate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, you, you, uh, what you can inherit. Right. Yeah. When he's talking about chopping down the cherry tree, mm -hmm. the cherry tree is represented as the Moors flag. Right. And that is dealing with the overthrowing of the Moors empire. Mm -hmm. and, and taking and adding states. Now understanding that state, this is the first time in, the, in, in, in history that the word state is now used. Mm, okay, okay. And, and so, <clears throat> when he overthrew it, chopped down the cherry tree, when he removed, removed the moors, and then interrupted the, the line of descendancy by placing the brand Negro, Black, Colored, Ethiopian mm -hmm, onto mm -hmm. the people because these people don't exist. Mm hmm mm hmm and because they don't exist, then you can't inherit anything because you 
are not tied back to any nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In order to be inheritable, you must be what your foremothers and forefathers were. Right. Because foremothers and forefathers leave it to the people bearing their names. Right. Right. And so once I remove that, and then you accept it especially. Right. And, which is the reason why the children were yanked away from the parents. Right. So that I know, so that, you know, they no longer have to worry about the children being taught the truth. Mm hmm mm hmm And that generationally, we, they can start instilling new information to get the babies to accept this new brand. Mm hmm and eventually the parents who had just went through this overthrow would die. Mm, 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 mm. And so when he started setting up, you know, you have the District of Columbia. Right, right. Now, I always come tell people, they ask me, what does the word district mean? What does it mean? You have, I live in the, what's called the Bay uh, Area, which is a part of, people in San Francisco, our territory, health and territory, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. You have what's called the Fillmore District. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I ask people so that they can understand it. Well, what is the Fillmore District? Oh, it's a part of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So then I just simply say, well, Washington, Washington D.C. says District of Columbia. Right. So then we're in Columbia. Right, right. You see, and, and, and I just leave it right there for people. Because then I let them figure it out. If it's the District of Columbia, then where is Columbia? Right. Yeah, Columbia would be the superior. Right, right. And right. so a district is just an, an, an annex or something else. It's okay. a part of something else. Right. Right. And then, of course, we know that when we break it down, you know, you're talking about the umbrella of the, of the Vatican and then, you know, British House, British Columbia, and so on and so forth, when we break that whole thing down. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll say this, that they're going to try to tell us, of course, that they never won their independence. Mm -hmm. It never happened. Right. Okay. They were still paying war tributes to Great Britain right. after Right. And you don't pay, the only the loser pays tribute. Right. You see, so they're still playing war in Vietnamese. They're still paying tributes to Great Britain. Not only are they paying war, you know, the tributes to Great Britain, but King George the Third, in fact, was a Moor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's right, that's right. And so the king that they were fighting against, who was King George the Third, was in fact a more. Right, that's so right. They were fighting for their independence from us in Great Britain. Mm, okay. And so, and that's the twofold thing with this whole Independence Day, 1776, 1770, uh, 79, all those things, those dates you know, uh, correlate those years because there's a lot of things that happened from 1774 to 1779. There's a lot of different things that took place. And you know, we're grouping them together mm -hmm. even though there may have been a year or two in between. Right, right. Okay, but it's all the same. Okay, okay. And the independence, you know, uh, never took place in Great Britain. Mm -hmm. They're still a, a British colony today. Right, right, and everybody going and, around. And, oh, pardon me, pardon me. Yeah, uh, no, pardon, pardon me. It, it, and everybody going around letting off fireworks and shooting off their firearms mm -hmm. and all that, and you really don't know that there's they're celebrating. They're celebrating ignorance. Yes, and, and not only that, they don't understand even the correlation. Of why, of, of what the red, white, and blue stands for. I mean, the thing goes way deeper, even in the celebration. This is the new year in, 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 um, in, in, in Ikuta. This is considered the new year. This is a time of year where the, uh, the Nile would flood over and you had the, the black foot that would come over to fertilize the soil. 
Wow. And so there's a whole other meaning. And, and so whenever you see the red, white, and blue, you're doing, dealing with shoe and tech nuts and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. in, in the Dow Star uh, series, which is really what this thing is about. Because mm -hmm. this is very close to where they can see the, uh, the red, white, and blue store, which represents the Dow, the Dow Star series. Wow. Knowledge, brother. Knowledge. Okay, well, we got yeah. like... We, pardon yeah, sorry, no, we got about uh, we got about two minutes left on here before we uh, uh, either take a break or go and uh, hold off until. We can, I mean, we can go if, um, if, you, if you want to continue. You know, I got a, a few minutes in my in my tank if you want to bring some questions and make sure we get you know, all the points here. No okay. Problem. Okay, no, no, bro. You did, you did ex exceedingly swell, bro. I mean, this is enlightenment, and um, I can say no. I, I just, uh, I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm, we're gonna we, we're gonna end it here. And you know, I, I know it's uh, three o'clock on the East Coast here, and I know it's like twelve okay. there on you, and it's late. So <laughs> I know we're gonna, you know, and but no, I know we're gonna we're we gonna we're gonna definitely do another show, bro. Cause I got to have you back on the show. Um, but no, you. you it, I, exceedingly well, brother. It, it's been enlightening to me, and uh, like I say, it's, it's always a, a learning process. We all learn, and uh, I definitely got to have you back on here, brother, to to finish this up. But uh, we're gonna make a yeah, part two to time. this. We, we're gonna definitely have a part two to this. Okay, let's do it. And uh, I, I just want to leave off um, with just I found this on the internet, uh, and it says on September 9th 1791, the federal city was named in honor of George Washington, and the district was named the Territory of Columbia. Columbia being a poetic name for the United States in use at that time. So I just want to leave that off, and you know, for the, the listeners and uh, the family that will be receiving this, please do some investigation and we will be having my brother Ramael back on the show definitely for a part two of this thing brother thank you for coming through bro thank you uh, okay. I appreciate you I appreciate the work uh, 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 brother the pleasure is all mine so I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut and paste this thing and then I'm going to get right back at you in a few okay bro alright peace and love alright peace and love ah uh, well, that is going to take us to the top of the hour and uh, take us to the bottom of this show. Uh, I love you, Moors. Like I say, don't believe me. Go check it out. And you will be amazed at the jewels you will find on your treasure hunt. I am your host, Supreme L. This has been another episode of Pardon the Interjection. Thank you to my guest, Ramael. And uh, I will see you again. Islam. Love and peace forevermore.